This video is sponsored by Current. This card right here is the future, the future of banking to be exact. Here, let me explain. This Visa debit card is its own mobile bank and it gets you paid up to two days faster. For example, you normally get paid on Friday, now you get paid on Wednesday. It's not a prepaid card, it's its own real bank account. You can use it with Apple Pay, Google Pay, Cash App, Venmo, it all works. Normally, if you go to an ATM that's not connected to your bank, they charge a fee. But with Current, you can use up to 55,000 free ATMs. It's also sick because you can deposit checks using the camera on your smartphone. They give you a free overdraft of $100 with no hidden fees. And look, it only takes two minutes to sign up and they'll send you the card for free. So if you're interested, check the link in the description down below. The college football playoff sucks. You know, many of us diehard fans were excited when they announced the college football playoff a few years back, but little did we know how boring and repetitive it would get. But before we dive into the problems with it, let me take you back to give some context. From Patrick Lewis, four-man Alabama rush. Got him. No, they didn't. No, they did. no my gracious. I was a young high school kid at the time. Growing up a huge fan of college football, I couldn't get enough of it. I witnessed Boise State beat Oklahoma in the Fiesta Bowl. I was at the big house the last time Michigan beat Ohio State back in 2011. If I wasn't glued to the couch on Saturday morning watching games, I was most likely playing NCAA football, the video game. The greatest part about college football in 2012 was that they announced a playoff system was coming into play beginning in 2014. Many of us fans celebrated this announcement because as much as we loved college football, there was a problem. One major problem. The BCS was a system used to decide the five major bowl game matchups, the four prestigious New Year's BCS bowls, and of course, the national championship. It was made up from a combination of voter polls and a computer system. The BCS was introduced into college football in 1998 and was constantly scrutinized for clear issues within the system. We would see controversies arise on a yearly basis, like in 2004 when Auburn, Oklahoma, and USC all went undefeated, yet Auburn was left out of the national title. Nothing they could do. Or like in 2011, when the national title was a rematch between LSU and Alabama. Alabama had lost to LSU just weeks before and finished third in the SEC. This left out Oklahoma State and Stanford, who had both won their conferences. Honestly, even though there were controversies on an annual basis, there was always one exciting part about the BCS. Johnson. Quick release, and the catch is made by Reed. He breaks free. Touchdown! The BCS benefited the top six conferences, known as the Automatic Qualifiers. But almost yearly, some school from one of the smaller conferences, teams like Boise State, Utah, and TCU, would sneak into a BCS Bowl via one of the at-large bids. This pissed off many of the bigger schools because the system was meant to be exclusive to the top dogs only. This was because they went down, quote, murderer's row on a weekly basis, whereas the Boise State and TCUs of the world played the little sisters of the poor, according to Ohio State's president in 2010. But even though the smaller schools played easier schedules, them going undefeated was often favored over one lost teams by the BCS. And when these BCS busters made it, they didn't disappoint. Over to football, Savoy gives it up, back to Warren, Warren, touchdown Utah! Boise State for the win. They hand it off to Johnson, Boise State has won! On the top and four something. Check it down and four, oh, that's a half that loses the football! It's a by Stevenson, Sylvester! The ball four times, throws it again, pop fake, goes back down the middle of the end zone, touchdown, Horn Frogs. TCU or Boise State, you wonder if it's a, a win like this could change the climate in the future. Even though TCU goes off to the Big East, of the little guy having a chance to play in the big game. As fun as this was, it had its limits. There was no way these BCS busters at the time could compete for a national title. Even years of proving themselves was not enough. For example, TCU in 2010 did just about everything they could. They went undefeated and they had won 25 of their last 26 games, but they were left on the outside looking in. With no tournament, it was going to be impossible to take the next step. But then, 
they introduced the plan to change everything. The college football playoff. This was exciting. It was something new, and it had fans like me extremely pumped up at the possibilities of what this could be. There were so many great moments in other sports that came from this type of setting. People love March Madness, professional playoffs, and even the lower division FCS playoffs. But even though college football seemed like it was going to get better, it was bittersweet because they were only going to include four teams. Wow, that's lame. But hey, being the optimist that I am, I felt that this was better than nothing. So I geared myself up for the future of college football. What was going to happen? Just seeing the potential of part five between Bama and Clemson just hurts my soul. Not that they don't deserve it. I mean, damn. Talent-wise, these two schools are unmatched. Dabo and Saban have done an incredible job building their programs. The point I'm trying to make is that a four-team playoff is just repetitive and boring. Let's take a look at some numbers. In seven years of the college football playoff, a whopping 11 total teams have made it in, six of which have only made it once. Then the top three teams, according to appearances, Alabama, Clemson, and Oklahoma, have all made it in at least four times. Now with the four-team playoff, the other, quote, major bowl games feel like they've lost a bit of their significance. If the previous system felt like B-tier BCS bowls with an A-tier championship, now it's an A-tier championship, B-plus tier playoff, and B-minus tier New Year's Day bowls. With the loss of that significance, the exciting days of the BCS busters are now long gone. All that's really left to go for is a shot at this playoff. Yet, the worst part about it is the playoff still doesn't allow the little guys a shot. This point was proven in 2017 and 2018. In 2017, there was only one school that finished the year undefeated. That team was UCF. UCF finished 12th in the standings that year, which is quite a long way from the top four. They didn't make it into the playoffs, but they did get to play Auburn in the Peach Bowl. Oh, by the way, Auburn had just beaten Alabama a few weeks prior. Anyways, UCF beat Auburn which meant they finished as the only undefeated team in the nation. They claimed that this made them the national champions and they got laughed at by the big dogs. But here's where things get spicy. UCF finished undefeated again. That puts their win streak at 25 games in a row. It's just like TCU in 2010, the year that people look back on as the perfect year for the playoff. Surely 25 games was enough to get UCF in. Drum roll please. They finished seventh, which honestly isn't that close. A 14 playoff is an illusion. It's just the right size to fool you into thinking that there's a tournament going on, when in reality, it's pretty much the same matchups year in and year out. I don't know how any fan of the game, outside of the small handful of teams at the top, can get excited to watch. 